Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Wine from On the Vine to the Road Tasted. I'm Brian, and sitting with me is... Jasmine. Jasmine. Hey, guys. (laughs) Hello, people. Uh, Today, we're talking about a wine from Abrona. We have a lot of information this week. We're just going to make a quickie here. Uh, (laughs) um, No, it's not. (laughs) I'm going to cut that out. (laughs) Uh, Too bad. Yeah. So what what we tried this last week was an Amarone, and this was a uh, Amarone della Valpicella is what we said. She's going to say it right. I'm going to say it the way I can say it with my stuttering problem. Well, but, I'm not Italian, but I'll try yeah. my best. Italiano. Mm-hmm. Hey. I want to see him negless. <laughs> um, before we start on it, I wanted to cover how Amarone came to be discovered. I found this story online. I think this is winefolly.com. I think is where I found this. And sometime between 1936 and 1940, a gentleman named Adelino Luchez, he was the winemaker of uh, a Villa Novare, or Via Novare, depending if you're from Italy or Mexico. He was apparently collecting barrels, and they forgot a barrel. And they didn't find this barrel that they forgot for two years. And he was so worried about getting fired. And so he called another winemaker over to come over and try the wine with them. They opened it, and they found out that the wine was really good, and that it, it wasn't it wasn't half half bad. And uh, so that's pretty much how Amarone came to be discovered. It was a mistake. The people at Cantina Negrar and Domina Benenti are claiming that they were he was their winemaker. I think the name of the company right now is Via Mesconi Abertoni is what the wine is or, or the winery is called now. But it could be either one, either one of those Cantina Negrar or Domino. Veneti. But that's, you know, that's a little cute little story that I found on it. I'm hoping it's true. It might be a, a, a myth. So, well, some of the best wines are usually caused by somebody forgetting something or an accident occurring. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's an accurate story. I mean, aren't, aren't like a rosés like the original wine from from the Romans? Uh, because they had no, they, they had no fermentation. Yeah, mm-hmm. they used they field no grapes and they yeah. just used what they had, and that was the whole start. But I mean, it goes even further back because the Phoenicians were the first ones to make wine. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. So it's always fun hearing little stories. I hope it's uh, true. Um, and so yeah, the one we tried was uh, what was the name of the company though? No, the a Montresor. Uh, Montresor. Uh, a Montresor is the company that we, mm-hmm. or the winemaker that we had ours from. And I have some information on the family. Okay. Um, I, I did get a chance to meet the daughter. I sadly don't remember her name because it was very traditionally Italian. And I just can't remember. I think it's, her her name started with a C. Um, it might have been Cesena or something like that. I, it's kind of vaguely coming back to me. But she is part of the Montresor Winery. That's her family. And they were founded in 1892. So their story uh, starts back from their family in the 19th century, where a branch of their family had moved to the Veneta region in Italy. And you brought out how this wine is from Barona, which is in the Veneta region. Mm-hmm. So it's northern Italy. And it, they... Uh, found their located viticulture where they wanted to start or and continue what they had already started um, as a family. It was one of the most important things that they were doing. And so they, they found this location in Veneto near an area uh, by the Lake of Garda, which is an, an area renowned for its moraine soils, which makes the importance of, of how they grow their Amarones here. Mm-hmm. It's also a, a granite a, a quarry there also, I think. Yeah. So they mine a lot of a granite there. Yeah. Because it's a, a material that's left from the glaciers. So there's two, there's two sides of a glacier. One's lateral and one's um, 
I forget what the other one is Horizontal. called. Yeah, it's on the other side of it. But they each have a different type of soil left behind because the glacier, uh, much like a riverbed, carries the soil throughout Is that time. lateral and vertical? It might be vertical. It's... Um, it starts with a, an, I think it was like a medium. It was talking about the lateral and then um, okay. I have to look it up. But, okay. Um, so it was talking about how the moraine soils are are a mixture of rock and soil. That's So it's a real tenacious, a little bit more of a kind of a hardier soil, something more rugged, rustic looking, much like the soil of Bordeaux. It's mm -hmm. got more of a... A heavy rock note to it. Mm -hmm. So these glaciers transported all those different types of dirt and um, boulders that built built up over the years to form this moraine soil. Mm -hmm. So um, this family found uh, founded their their new start there when part of like I said part of their family had branched out to this area, and this area is known as uh, Cantina Giacoma Montresor. That's the name of their um their viticultural area of this family so it's one of the most um encompassing italian viticultural areas it's a reference point for the vapocello wine tradition so they have four generations of family uh, uh, that has continued to uh, produce this type of wine in the veneta region and again, the daughter is in the fourth generation. She's part of the fourth generation of family members that I got to meet. Um, and sh they they continue to show respect for this this area by uh, respecting the historical roots. Uh, their their family's work shows um, that they have a love and constant respect for their terroir because of the production of what they produce. It, their their wines show that through each generation they have traditionally carried down the different types of um, methods and they stuck with one particular method that is one of their highlights of their their winery and that's the wine that we drank just a couple like mm -hmm. i think it was last week the san Maroni. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about the different levels right because there's Five different levels, but then you said there's one in th before the yeah, fifth one. Yeah, there's like a four point single vineyard. Five, the single vineyard. Yeah. Um, so you talked Amarone, about yeah, the level uh, one. Adelo. Yeah, the level one is uh, a Valpicella Classico. Uh, and what it is is those are picked and then they're crushed immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, almost no barrels are used in that one like that. Um, it might be mixed with some of the uh, older grapes or the older uh, uh, leftovers from the other four different levels of, of Amarone or Valpicella. Then there's Valpicella Superior. I'm sorry, the Valpicella Classico runs between $13 and $15. It's, it's not a bad wine. It's very fruity. Um, the acidity is, is hard to control sometimes in those. Uh, then the uh, Valpicella Superior is in between $15 and $20. Uh, Valpicella Superior Repasso. They said if you want to get an Amarone under $20, get the Repasso. Because the Repasso is a mix between the Classico and the Amarone. They use, I think, 25% of the leftovers from Amarone and they put it in the Repasso. And it won't be as, um, uh, uh, it's like a, the fruit has been drowned down on the Amarone. It's not extremely fruity. It's well balanced. Um, it's a dry because the Amarone is made into almost like a raisin. And so it's a little bit more fruity than the Amarone, but it's not as well balanced as the Amarone. The and, city levels. Yeah, the city it's levels a little, a little bit, bit higher. higher. Yeah. I mean, you need to definitely decanter it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And the, the alcohol level on the Amarone is much higher than the Repasso. Your Repasso might be between 13 and 14% when your Amarone, because the alcohol is dry or the sugar is dry when they make it, uh, the alcohol levels can be up to 15% on an Amarone, a Della Valpicella. They, those things run about $50. We found this one at a big wine wine uh, company um, for, for about $40. Uh, 
And then I had a ten dollar coupon. Yeah. <laughs> and but so you're, I got it for like thirty bucks. Usually you're gonna find bucks. it for no yeah. less than forty. Yeah. On yeah. average, yeah. they're gonna be forty and fifty dollars. And depending how the Amarone is made, there are two different varieties and or, or two different ways that it's made. Uh, Jasmine might go over it. I didn't go over her notes, so I'm not sure. But there are two different ways that it's made. There's a traditional method, then there's a new method. Um, it's more up to date, where it uses a new barrel. The older method uses uh, two different types of barrels. Uh, what is that? The neutral, uh, neutral oak, which is a used barrel, and then the chestnut oak. Yeah, the chestnut. That's oak. a traditional method. So that's um, so the Amarone della Valpicella, made in the tr traditional method, can last up to what did they say, forty years? I believe so. Yeah. So. Had so looked yeah. At. So depending on that. Then the 4.5, level 4.5, is a single vineyard Amarone Della Valpicella. You'll be lucky to find those things for about $80. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's... For the single vineyard, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Recchiotto, right? Is that how you say Recchiotto. it? Recchiotto. Hard. Recchiotto. Recchiotto Della Valpicella. This is similar to a Sauterne. And those so things, very sweet. Yeah. Concentrated. It's about forty dollars for a three hundred for a three hundred twenty five milliliter, mm -hmm. so half the size of a wine bottle. But those are the five levels that I found. And depending, I mean, there are many different wineries who make this, so there's different uh, methods on the three first ones. But your Amarone, uh, your Amarone della Valpicella, has to be made either one of those uh, two methods. It can't be made with anything else. So it's so, traditional or the new oak? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order to be a DOCG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So going over the levels of the the Italian wine classifications. So Brian just mentioned how there this particular 2013 Amarone de Valpicello is a DOCG. So they're similar to the US Appalachian categories of how we level the wines. So this one is a DOCG. That means it's the first or highest astringency of wine. So it's your highest quality, which means that it's a slower process to produce this particular wine. It takes more time. It's more laborious. Then you have a DOC, which is second level. And they're both, they both have um, a controlled origin but the DOCG has a specific uh, guaranteed uh, place or region that it is specific to. And it cannot be altered or changed. Laws are very strict um, in this particular level. So then again, second would be DOC, which means, again, controlled origin. Then you have third level, which is IGT, which is... Uh, going to be probably the wines that you would find that are between 30 and 40 dollars the 20 dollar wines of this area would be considered a vdt which are vino de tavola which means table wine so traditionally that's the fourth placement of classification of italian wine so just like other parts of Europe, you're going to find, especially in France, there's different levels when it comes to these premium, high-quality wines. But then you do f have lower levels where you can find your economical or go-to um, wines. But it doesn't mean that the wine is not going to taste good or have a good quality or, or um, production to it. Like you were talking about earlier, they take the Ripasso and they blend in a bit of the Amarone. So if you're going to get something that's under twenty dollars, so you would get the uh, the repasso because mm -hmm. yeah. they're they still have that depth of character, that rich boldness, the fruit and the sugar and acidity levels are not as smooth, but mm -hmm. they would just require a bit more decantering, mm -hmm. and they end up being more of a food friendly wine because sometimes you need the food to kind of calm down what's going on in the palate. Yeah, the acidity mm -hmm. and, or, or tone in the high, high of fruit. Sometimes that'll get in the way too. Yeah. Mm. So this this particular um, Amarone 2013 by Montresor, um, Della Valpicella, had a blend of four traditional grapes. So we had the Corvina, the Rondinella, the 
Molinara and the Osoleta, which I don't know if you brought those out. No, I did not. So um, that's there's there's these are like the main traditional grapes, but they can be blended. You were bringing out earlier to me with Cabernet Sauvignon, and you're saying some other non-indigenous grapes. Yeah, but they can't be a, D- a DOCG. Yeah, at that, that point, yeah. they're not in that level. Yeah. So within the highest level, you have only the traditional ones. So this one, again, has the four main yeah. grapes. I think a maximum of 25% can be other varieties. Mm-hmm. But again, won't be a DOCG. So usually, or the, the usual process for making wine is to harvest the grapes and to either process them uh, by pressing the juice or leaving them for a couple of days or weeks in a tank um, before pressing them. So that's the traditional way. Uh, This process is when the Amarones are harvested, um, the grapes are left to dry partially on mats prior to fermentation. And this is what, what, this is why the cost of an Amarone goes up because it takes a longer um, time for the grape to dry out it's a longer period of time they have to find a an area that has more of a breezy a breezy current so they traditionally will lay them on these straw mats and usually in a in a loft Mm -hmm. and they spread them out and they dry out so this can take up to four months uh, to get the grapes to their ideal state of what they need to produce the amarones yeah they're almost raisins Mm -hmm. they're raisin at like when yeah. You know, they're, it's like drying out or dehydrating any kind of fruit. Mm-hmm. So then um, that, like you had brought out, it uh, they had they once at their that point they lose about thirty to forty percent of their water weight, and then that creates that concentrated sugar, that in turn makes that the the ultimate per- flavor that produces out of that amarone grape. Yeah. Another reason why the cost is higher is because. Uh, it takes twice as many grapes to make one bottle. Right. So it goes from 1,000 grapes. It's like 1,022 to 2,011 uh, grapes to make one bottle. Right. And that's why it adds to the cost of the production significantly. Yeah. yeah. So in, so the results are you get this rich, full-bodied, in, intensely, highly aromatic uh, notes of like deep black cherry, very juicy. You get notes of pipe tobacco, chocolate. And usually it's served with, um, Amarone is served great on its own, like it doesn't need food pairing. But it does pair wonderfully with uh, stewed meats, bold cheeses, and of course, Brian and my favorite is chocolate. This mm. particular one is, is especially pairs well with dark chocolate. And I would suggest that after dinner, you would you could have your dinner, your course with it, try it with the wine, but then have a little bit of the wine later on with a piece of dark chocolate and mm. just it's like perfect how it seals and ends the flavor on the palate yeah and you were going to bring out um what we paired with it yeah we, what we had cooked in the recipe we made for it yeah so we made an uh an asian ginger pork and it's not it's not recommended on this wine but although pork goes with everything the pork goes with everything <laughs> it does it's like chicken but it was an asian a ginger pork and um i'll put the i'll put the ingredients up on on our website i'll really do it this time but um so I'll, I'll bring it up really quick half cup orange juice two tablespoons soy sauce two tablespoons minced a ginger root you have to actually mince it yourself you can't yeah. yeah you just use a microplane yeah it's pretty um, easy. so one teaspoon of minced garlic or garlic salt i used a garlic salt but we didn't have any garlic mm-hmm. uh, one tablespoon of uh i used a, a general sow's stir fry sauce which is from trader joe's it's so but, good yeah i used that in place of what uh the the recipe i looked up it says one teaspoon of uh, a chili paste but I I wanted to I wanted to stick with the Asian and I don't think the chili paste would go good with it, so we went with General Sal's stir fry sauce. It went really good. Yeah, the texture was good. It, it's th- so chili paste is even if you get an Asian chili paste, that's what you would go get. Yeah, it's thick. It mm-hmm. has like more of a thick texture to it. So when you this particular sauce we used, it has a thick texture and it has the ginger, the sesame. It does have a bit of orange. <clears throat> 
Because we zested orange in there and we put orange juice also. Yeah. So the sauce also had those flavors in it. So it just enhanced it. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I, I zested, you zested, you zested uh, Ginger, orange. I think we got one a tablespoon of orange zest out of that. I it was, it, yeah, it was two tablespoons of ginger, yeah. right, zested, yeah. and then... Yeah, and we tried to get two table, but we couldn't get two, but it was still good. And then um, half teaspoon salt, and this will work on in between four to six pork chops. They say to put it either to roast it or bake it, but I, I, I made it, it. stove top mm-hmm. on probably about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of olive oil. Mm. Um, it was You it could was add sesame virgin. oil too, yeah, well, but we yeah, didn't do could. it. But no, we, we didn't do it. sesame oil would actually bring out and enhance all those mm-hmm. Asian flavors. Yeah. Like a, a little bit more um, richer. Yeah. yeah. So it was the, tender though. It, it was. was it was really good. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit of a little bit of a pink on the inside and mm-hmm. it was cooked all the way through. It was excellent. But what I noticed with this is that um, with the Amarone is that you take a sip of the Amarone first and then eat your meal. If you have the Asian pork with some citrus in it, if you eat the pork beforehand, um, it's going to conflict a little bit. So if you're going to use Asian pork like we did, which you don't have to, but if you do, it was still really good. Um, I drank the wine, then I had the pork, and it went it went a lot better with that. For first tasting the wine and yes. then taking a bite of the food. Yes. Mm. So it, it went and and these these pork chops, um, one hundred and thirty six calories a piece. Yeah. You know it's not very much. Not it's bad. very little. And a lot of protein. Yeah. Did we have it with jasmine rice or? No, we, no, just, we didn't. Uh, no, we just had the. We had oh yes we did we had a jasmine rice and we had a broccoli with it yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah we did. I put a little bit of soy sauce in my. In my, uh, in my uh, rice, but mm-hmm. you ate yours uh, plain. Yeah, because that's how you like mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I'm not a big soy sauce. No, you're not straight person mm-hmm. you know, of that. I like my salts. Yeah, I'm Sweet from Arkansas. <laughs> uh, not really, but no, I'm not. <laughs> it's fun to say. So I confuse our audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but so yeah, the the amarone. <clears throat> I'm glad that. We came across this. I, I'd never had it before. So, yeah, it's it it it's. I mean, it, for a northern Italian wine, that is from a region that has the levels of astringency that go up to DOCG. It it's a more expensive location because of the processes of how they make those, but you can still say that for forty dollars, you know, and you buy this. This nice, I mean, it, like you were saying, the Seagull Vineyard's 80. Mm-hmm. So you're still getting this, you know, high quality, um, one of their most intense flavored bold rich wines from that region for $40. It's not bad. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, for for some people, that is a special occasion to spend. Um, and then for others, it might be just, you know, wine that they would consider... You know, they'd have maybe a couple of those bottles around for the week in that price range, depending on how they, you know, entertain themselves or, you know, maybe family or whatever they, you know, their preferences on and how mm-hmm. they like to share. Because everybody's different of what they, yeah. you know, like to do when it comes to hosting. But um, traditionally, I think for $40 from that region, you're getting a really well-priced wine. And that's what the Montresor family has tried to give to us is this um this wonderful rendition of what that region what that means for these families who who have definitely come to love and appreciate the the viticulture for for where they produce and grow these um, grapes and the indigenous locations of what it brings to the table so uh, the the daughter that uh, I got to work with a little bit in the past before COVID, I had, she would come in uh, to California for probably twice a year. So she would, you know, it's it's always a, a privilege to meet these people who are from a different part of the world, and they show you through who they are and how they represent their family, 
how they talk about their grapes, the method, uh, just um, the kind of people there in general. It shows you the the value that they have put into what they're giving to you and that it means something to them. And again, we've talked about how that that truly makes the, the best wine because you have a passion and a love for for these um you know what they do you know when, when you're doing something that you love it shows a difference it shows that you're 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 sharing this with other people because it's not just about numbers it's about it's about sharing what they have come to appreciate with you mm -hmm. and she she was a very nice representation i think of her family and yeah. and i think it's it's that it's important to them that they send someone to represent their family um, because it's not it's not just about the product it's about who they are and the foundation of what has you know produced this this love for what they do so yeah, yeah it's ownership mm -hmm. they, you, you can tell when someone has ownership in something because mm -hmm. the quality is usually really high yeah and she yeah. she was she definitely showed that for her family and I <clears throat> really enjoyed meeting her um, and. I hope to see her again in the future. I, it, in fact, one of my um, one of my former bosses, uh, he actually had a chance to go. Uh, I think once in the time when I was working at this one place, that to go visit their family, and go on a tour through uh, the company that I worked for, and so he, um, you know, he was able to meet them and and go to their vineyard and walk through their land. So it. It's a it's a great privilege to see how the families work, and um, to sit down and have dinner with them, and be able to to go through the day and walk through their their grape fields, and and they show you how they you know pick the grapes and let you do something to be a part of you know the process, so you can be involved in in what they um, what they do there, and and so and hopefully. You know, others out there, if you're interested in wine, will one day be able to do something like that, whether it's on a small scale or something larger, you know, it just depends on um, where you want to go and travel. So that's all I got to say. Yeah. So another uh, interesting fact about uh, Verona is that when William Shakespeare wrote Romeo and, and Juliet, uh, that is where it takes a place. It takes place in Verona. So I found that. Interesting. Another thing I found uh, pretty neat was that uh, Valpicella ranks just after uh, Chianti in wine production. So it's uh, as much as they, I think there's a total of 22,000 acres that is uh, dedicated to uh, Valpicella um, or to Amarone. Amarone? I should say Amarone. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're just right underneath. A uh, Chianti when it comes to wine up a uh, uh, production and I think it's also based on a uh, quality as well. So yeah, that's my take, our take on on this Amarone that we had. Anything else to add before we sign off? Um, no, just want to say uh, thanks for listening, and we we're glad that you guys are enjoying our. Um, podcast and we hope that uh, as we do each one that maybe you guys can throw some questions out there let us know um, particularly like what you're interested in we can highlight different things for you um, and definitely try the suggestions that we on our wines uh, and we have many different uh, categories and price ranges so if you ever want to send us something through our website we can uh, give you suggestions for, you know, different things. I know right now it's hard with all the our world still being kind of up and down because of COVID, but there's lots of things that people do through Zoom. And um, I know that a lot of my clients have um, actually Zoom parties, you know, where they, they get together and they do their own little mini wine things or spirit things with mm -hmm. tastings and food pairings. And so... You know, there's this particular uh, client of mine that said she didn't know how to make any drinks. And she, since COVID, her and some of her girlfriends started a Zoom thing where they they do, I think, 
like once a week they go on and they each pick like different ingredients and they make up like a drink that they've never mm. made before mm -hmm. and so there, there's lots of different things you know that you could do to have fun so um, if you ever have any questions or you need some ideas just so that you have something fun to do and want to have some ideas through this time period that we're going through with all this there's lots of suggestions that Brian and I can give you that we would love to share so mm. yeah well, we thank you, our listener out there. We really appreciate you listening. <laughs> and we really hope that... And that you, tell your friends about our podcast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have more people listen and give us your thoughts and ideas and uh, maybe give suggestions on what you would like to, to hear us talk about. So, all right. Yep. All right. Well, this is Wine from On the Vine to the Road Tasted. Again, this is Amarone 2013, Amarone della Valpicella. By the Montresor family. By the Montresor family. We thank them for mm -hmm. making this delicious wine. Right. So, See you guys right. later. Have Bye. fun. Bye. Bye.